Hi everyone. Oh. So, Burn, hello. You must have good day. <laughs> Parang, I'm okay, I'm okay. So, <laughs> for those na <laughs> Ikaw, kamusta ka? Alam mo, actually, no, masama pakiramdam ko. Pero dahil uh, gusto natin uh, ma- makapag-share sa ating mga attendees ngayon, no, talagang uh, pinilit ko na makapag-run tayo ng webinar for today para sa kanila. Yes. Yeah, so, Oo, oh, of course. Yeah. So, sila kaya kumustahin natin? Uh, malinaw ba yung ating, ano, ating broadcast? Paki-raise ng inyong yeah. mga kamay? Click yeah, po ni so Rachel. for everyone... Yeah, for everyone who's here already, can you raise your hand so that we know that the reception is is good kung saan man kayo? So meron dyan in your panel, you'll see there, there's EJ. Oy, ito pangalan ni Osman. EJ. Oh, ano? <laughs> EJ, Roland, Annalyn. Um, can you kindly raise your hand? Um, in your panel, you'll see meron siya yung um, maliit na hand icon. You can press on that. So that that's how you raise your hand, actually. Baka kasi may mga first-timer tayo um, in terms uh, of paggamit ng webinar platform. Oh, tsaka mamaya kapag may questions kayo, pwede rin kayo mag-raise your hands para din tayo nasa live ng seminar. Ayan, so yeah, there, Roland. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, gano'n. Tapos, mamaya, kung may question kayo, pag raise your hand, pwede kang mag-type sa question section ng ating control panel. Yeah. Okay. Sige. So, mukhang clear naman. So, Burn actually came from the Middle East, na Burn? Correct. For how many years ka ba based in the Middle East? Yeah, actually, on and off ako, no? Middle East, Philippines, for... I think more than five years then. No? Pero doon kasama kong family ko. No? Uh, yeah, it was it was uh, both uh, rewarding at the same time, challenging. At, uh, mahirap din kasi. You're, you're far from your loved ones. No? Your parents, your siblings. Iba yung, ano, iba yung, uh, yung experience. Pero at the same time, eh, medyo mahirap dahil malayo ka sa mga mahal mo sa buhay. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Ko. So basically this um siguro before we start no let me tell you all about why we came up with uh enter entrepreneurship so the the idea started when Bern and I discussed via Facebook lang I think no, Bern, and uh, a collaboration was formed so very important ang um ang pagiging open to things like that no so so what we did was we talked about it community burn and then we figured out that we needed to teach people uh, wherever you are mga Pinoy's especially wherever you are in the world on how to create the life and the business that you want so uh, one of the things that we saw that was necessary was to come up with a set of workshops or a series of workshops that would teach you well basically technical skills, no? mostly um, focusing on a particular area of the business where you need help in. So um, for this particular webinar, for the first session, we decided to give this as a gift for everybody. Yeah, so happy um, new year. So, happy new year, because new year, so oh. dapat happy. <laughs> so, so we decided to give this as a gift for you. So the title of this session for today is Preparing Yourself and Making Your Ideas Happen. Ayan. So, Bern, Alam mo, you want to introduce Yeah, Ginger, no, ma- ma- lang, no? especially yung mga attendees natin na nasa abroad. No? I think that this is, the, this is uh, an opportunity for you to make your, your kung ano man yung pinapangarap nyo na, na business or kung ano man yung goals na gusto yung maabot ma- by starting your, your, uh, your desired and uh, dream business, no? At uh, hindi excuse na nasa abroad kayo ay eh, hindi kayo makakapag-umpisa ng negosyo na gusto ninyo sa Pilipinas o pag-uwi nyo ng Pilipinas. As a matter of fact, uh, for me, no, kahit na nasa abroad ako, nakakapag-simula uh, uh, ako ng negosyo sa Pilipinas kahit malayo ako. So that there's no excuse now for us uh, considering na internet age na tayo ngayon. Kaya ito, itong webinar na in-introduce namin ni Ginger sa inyo will be your, your jumpstart no, sa para yung, ano man yung ideas ninyo, ano man yung uh, ginaplano ninyo. Ay, uh, matulungan namin kayo na, na mag- maging totoo sa simula ngayon right. taon na ito. That's right, that's right. So, Bern, you want to introduce yourself for Ayan. those na, uh, yeah, Ayan, for those no, who attended? 
Yeah, we are at uh, Ginger. Uh, so I'm Bern Gutierrez at I'm a husband. At uh, ako rin po ay uh, father ng isang six-year-old kong daughter. At uh, isa rin po akong vlogger sa aking uh, personal finance na website. no. And of course, uh, ako rin po ay financial literacy advocate by being a chairman of Angat Pilipinas Coalition for Financial Literacy. No? So we teach uh, uh, OFWs, youth, uh, creative people, yung mga artista at musikero, mga sundalo. So tuturuan natin silang maging uh, financially literate and wise financial decision makers. So, at the same time, isa rin po akong online stock market coach sa so, mga members ng Truly Rich Club ni Brother Bo Sanchez. Also, isa rin po akong online entrepreneur. And at the same time, isa rin po akong musician, member po ako ng banda, and I, I also write songs for other artists and bands. And syempre, isa nga po akong personal finance coach. And actually, naging author na rin recently. No? So, meron po kami na uh, two books and another uh, couple of books coming up uh, this year, hopefully. No? So, yan po yung aking uh, profile. How about you, Ginger? Yeah, so for those who don't know me, um, uh, hindi ako kasing sikat kasi ni Burn. Si Burn, very sikat yan. Very popular, grabe. Ay, may commercial um, ng Ginger, ha? Yan ang sikat. <laughs> in any part of the world, si Burn. You, when you say Burn Gutierrez, everyone knows him. <laughs> so, okay, for uh, I'd like to introduce myself. So, I'm a wife. I'm a wife to EJ. EJ is um, the chief technology officer of a digital agency here in Manila. I'm also a mother of a cute little girl. So, marami akong pictures when you follow me and my blog. You will see my little girl. Her name is Zika. So, pinapasok ko lang. I'm actually at home because because I'm a work-at-home mom. Uh, so, pinapasok ko lang right now sa kwarto para hindi maingay. Um, I'm also a blogger. I've been blogging since 2008. Um, I'm a digital ambassador right now. I'm a digital ambassador for brands like Wilkins, um, Pampers. Um, so, several brands actually. Um, I'm also, but this is this is actually my work. Um, I'm the CEO of Manila Workshop. So, uh, I'm sure you know Manila Workshops kasi dun kayo nag-sign up Definitely. for this webinar. Oh. Um, so, Manila Workshops is a, an events company and we focus on creating lifestyle learning events for you guys. So, our tagline is really turning your entrepreneurial dreams into reality because what we believe that um, uh, we can actually help each other by giving knowledge and sharing experiences through different learning events. Um, lovelearning.co, this will be introduced to you in a couple of months probably. It's a, it's a site where you can buy different things that you can learn from. So, para siyang online store, but what we sell are things that you can learn from. So, books, ebooks, corporate training sessions, mentoring sessions. Basically, we have this already up in Manila Workshops. If you notice, we have a tab called Shop in Manila Workshop, so you can go to that. That's that's what we will migrate to Love Learning. And Memory Crafters, <clears throat> MemoryCrafters.com is an entity that will help uh, that actually... Actually, it's a it's a series right now under Manila Workshops, but, but eventually it will be uh, split into another company, um, and we help people become creative entrepreneurs. So when we say creative entrepreneurs, these are people who are artists, who are singers, so um, and the like. So so this is this is the brand for that particular segment. So I'm also a technopreneur. I have I am a co-founder of three tech startup companies here in Manila. Uh, we haven't launched them yet, but we are launching it them this year. I'm also a business coach, so I mentor people and I guide people if they want to start their own businesses. I'm also in YouTube, so this was this I started a year ago. I actually I started this pala last year. So the channel is GTV channel, but I only have a few episodes there. Um, most of the thoughts kasi I normally write in my blog. It's not here, but it's Mommy Ginger. So most of my thoughts on business, entrepreneurship, and even mommyhood I write in Manila in in sorry, in uh, mommyginger.com. So so there, that's me. So, ka, Ginger. Okay. yes. Commercial model. 
Ay, ano ba? <laughs> okay, wala na, wala na. Okay, let's start. I think we need to start. <laughs> okay, start. Burn. So, let's start. Okay, we can start this this webinar by actually asking this question. Kasi marami kami, kaming naririnig ni Burn na mga tanong like this. Can we start our own business now? Pwede na ba ako mag-resign? This one, lagi yan tinatanong ng maraming tao. Pwede na kaya kung bumalik sa Pilipinas, so sa mga kababayan natin in different parts of the world, diba? they always ask, pwede na ba akong bumalik? When is it the right time to go back right. and start my business? In fact, Bern, last week I had this uh, colleague, I was a banker before, so I had an office mm -hmm. mate who was asking me. Um, she had the child recently and she was contemplating on resigning already. So I get to encounter a lot of people who are really seriously uh, seriously thinking about resigning or dropping whatever it is that they're doing right now to start their own business. Oh, totoo yan, so, totoo, Ginger. Even, even ako din, ah, meron din ako mga, especially mga kasama ko before sa abroad. So they were asking me, ano ba, ta tama na ba yung gagawin namin decision tulad mo na uwi na kami, mag-resign na kami sa trabaho namin. So, siguro ito yung ano, no, time para sagutin natin sila, Jinjo. Yes. So, kami ni Burn, what we came up with is um, some of the questions that you you should ask yourself before you jump into to starting your own business. We actually collated it and we created a list. Okay. So, the list... With that list, we came up with determining your fitness level. So we came up with, with the acronym FIT. Okay, so we'll be discussing each one. So FIT means uh, we'll be discussing financials. We'll be discussing inspiration and mindset. We'll be discussing timing. Ano ba yung proper timing when it comes to your personal life? And timing when it comes to the business. Diba? So ano ba yung dapat isipin bago tayo tumalon or before we take that leap into entrepreneurship? So let's go to the first uh, bullet point, Bruno, no? yes, which uh, is financials. Yeah, punta tayo sa financials. Okay. Napaka-importante okay, so the first. Yan, Yes, of course. Okay. So the first thing that we need to to think of is have a clear idea on how much your monthly expenses are. I know like tracking expenses, Benjo, uh, even especially when we talk about personal expenses, parang sasabihin mo, bakit ginger hindi naman to burn? Ano ba to? Hindi naman related to negosyo. But um, the end goal really of a business is for you to have that lifestyle where where you can live comfortably, diba? So, ang goal naman natin is really to have passive income so that you get to enjoy the life that you want to live, diba? So, es especially um, if that, uh, well, talking about that goal, you need to see kung ano, magkano ba yung ginagastos mo for you to live that particular type of lifestyle, diba? Kasi dun tayo patungo eh. Right, Burn? Correct, uh, Ginger. So, Especially no, yung mga kababayan natin na, alam mo, that they earn, they earn uh, money. No? May regular silang income. Pero, at the same time, karamihan sa ano hindi nila alam, makaka ba talaga yung ginagasis ko on a monthly basis? Kasi, unang-una, problema dyan, dahil nga, hindi na nililista. Magkano ba yung ginagasis ko para sa sarili ko? Magkano yung ginagasis ko sa, para, sa pamilya ko? At the same time, hindi na nadi-distinguish ano yung mga needs and wants niya. No? So, anong nangyayari dyan? Hindi na na-monitor na, na yung pagpasok ng pera at yung paglabas ng pera. Which is very crucial no? kung ikaw ay uh, magsisimula ng isang mong negosyo. If you cannot monitor yeah. your own personal expenses, how much more na mamomonitor mo yung expenses and kita mo sa negosyo mo? That's true. So the first bullet point is really it's best to write down all of your personal expenses first and have that amount in mind before you start your business. Because ako burn, I think it's it's a mindset we need to teach people that business is actually a means of or a way for you to diversify, the right? in terms of investing. So for that particular, ako, when I went into this business, in Manila Workshops, I, I saw to it that I knew where the income would go. So kami ng husband ko, um, aside from like talking about expenses and really later on we'll go to that point, uh, we really decided that 
I was in charge of the income that we got from Manila workshops would be placed in the educational fund that was entitled for my daughter. Mm -hmm. So when you go into business, it's good to have that clarity in mind because at least you know how much talaga ang, ang dapat mong punuan. So, kunwari ako, if, kunwari ikaw burn, if you, kayo nag-usap kay ni Mises and ikaw yung in charge, for example, sa lahat ng bills, uh -huh. if you know that particular amount in mind, when you go into business, you know that from that particular business, you need to um, achieve the income to spend it for the bills, di ba? So, ganun yung magandang mindset. Nakikita mo na parang kung anong kinikita mo, nilalagay mo dun sa expenses na dapat mong, kung ano yung responsibility mo. Tama yun, Ginger, na madagdag ko lang, nabanggit mo din, no? na importante rin na meron kang, ano, meron kang goal, meron kang purpose kung bakit gusto mo sumulan yung negosyo na yun. No? Kasi if, if you, if, gaya ng sinabi ni Ginger, na gusto nilang kumpisan yung negosyo na yun, para sa education ng kanilang anak. So, so meron kang figure na tina-target na bago ma-achieve yung goal na yon na mapag-aaral yung anak nila in the future sa college, no? Baka papuntahin nila sa Harvard, no? Parang parang ganoon. So alam mo oh. na education sa Harvard, no? Eh ay negosyo mo, uh -huh. mo yung numero mo sa simula pa lang. Yes. Um, so, yeah, very important that you discuss it with your spouse, especially kung meron kang asawa, no? or, or, or even if the parents, about with your parents, kung single ka pa, it's very important that you discuss with them what particular bill or what particular responsibility in terms of expenses you will shoulder. Para at least klaro din kung ano yung kikitain mo from your business, it will go to that particular expense. Also, have a clear process of tracking your personal expenses. So it's advisable if you already have been using this process for six months. Like kami ng husband ko, I, when we track our expenses, we use the envelope system, diba? So, Parang we identify yung mga expenses and then kung magkano yung kailangan for these particular expenses, pumapasok siya sa envelope on the uh, middle of the month and at the end of the month. Kayo, Bern, paano ba kayo mag-track? Al alam mo kasi, Ginger, no, isa akong accountant, isa akong auditor, tapos si Nisi kasi na sanay din sa sales no, nung siya eh, nagtatrabaho sa, sa mga retail companies. No? Kaya... Ako simple lang na ano eh, na pagmilista eh, nung, nung uh, gagastusin mo for the month, what you can do is refer to your previous month's expenses. Kaya importante, nagtatabi ka ng mga resibo. Huwag nyo ipunin yung resibo for the sake of just iniipon nyo lang. No? Gamitin nyo yan, i-monitor yung expenses nyo last month at i-compare nyo kung magkano gagastusin mo for this month. Kasi when you compare your, your notes, yung mga nilista mong expenses last month, manalaman mo alam ba yung pwede mong bawasan naman for this month. So, napapag-budget ka ng tama dahil nakikita mo, alin ba yung mga priorities mo sa mga gastusin mo. Napaka-importante sa mag-asawa, yeah. napapag-usapan nyo na hinahin natin dapat hinahin. Hinahin yung mga needs. Yung mga good, nice to have, pwedeng later on na yan. Ang, ang point lang natin dito, if you list down your expenses, nakikita natin ano ba talaga yung mga dapat natin unahin versus na pwede naman, sa mga pwede naman natin gastusin in the future mas madali natin sila natin. Yes, so yan. For this particular idea, it's really trying to know ano yung expenses na kailangan para at least you know kung magkano yung makukuha mo from or what you're gonna aim when you start your own business and saan siya mapupunta. So, it's good to know that. So, for your next point, have a parachute fund that would last you to sustain your business and lifestyle until your ROI. So, ang ibig sabihin ng ROI is return on investment. So, there are simple steps naman to find your return of, in of investment. Kasi, di ba, syempre, when you think of an idea, hindi naman automatically alam mo na kaagad kung kailan kakikita. Ah, diba, Bert? Parang oh, um, gusto ko magtayo ng man. workshop company. <laughs> uh, alam ko na nakikita ko in six months. But because obviously, there are different factors that you need to consider. Oh, okay. diba? And there are things that will probably change your projections. Diba? But the, the steps that you can do to, to know your ROI is, first of all, list down all of your cost components. So including tax that will be incurred, admin costs, etc. So this is what I do normally when I start a business. I'm, I'm very into 
the parang the figures, the numbers of, of, of businesses. So parang once I have an idea, I go directly to my Excel my Excel template, which I will share with you guys for those who attended this workshop. I will share that particular template with you. I go to that and I see ano ba yung mga different things na gagastosan ko, paggagastosan ko. For example, um, top of mind kasi kunwari magbubukas ka ng food ng restaurant, uh, restaurant for example. Ang mga may isip mong expense dyan yung Siyempre, mga uh, ingredients, di ba? The, the cost of the, the location, yung renta mo for the location, yung mga manpower involved, di ba? Pero, yun nga eh, for some people kasi, hindi nagiging uh, automatic sila to think of other stuff, like for example, marketing, yung mga sampling ng food, for example, pag nag-bake ka, hindi nila nakikita na these are also costs or components that they need to track. Exactly. So it's very good to have a template or something that you can refer to so that um, you know if you're missing out on something. Totoo yan. Kasi hindi natin naiisip eh, yung mga ganyan. Oo. Madagdag ko, Ginger, no? Na, nabanggit mo yung paglilista ng mga cost components, no? Sa pag-determine mo ng, ano, ng, ng yung uh, return of investment no? sa isang negosyo na binabalak mo. Meron ako nakausap kasi, no? Na isang okay. nagninegosyo mo. Ang tingin negosyo nila, meron silang mga binibenta mga damit, so sumasama sila sa mga tsangge, o meron talaga silang store, no? Pero ang isang problema pala nila na nakita ko nung pinareview sa akin yung cost nila, yung simpleng mga pamasahe at pang gasolina, hindi nila nalilista. So lumalabas in a week, mm-hmm. nagagasos nila, nasa 700 to 900 pesos a week. Biro mo yun, for a month, you're spending uh, more than 2,000. A month na, na hindi mo nailista sa cost nila. So yan yung mga isa sa importante nga dapat na nakikita natin. That's why it's it's important that you list down all your costs sa umpisa pa lang. Yeah. Sometimes kasi we we fail to see na parang these are costs. Eh. Yan. Especially yan, yung mga marketing budget, yung mga sampling. Oh, oh. These are costs. A transportation. Yung parang sige, dadaan na lang naman din ako eh. Or papunta rin naman ako dun sa coffee yeah. shop eh. Idadaan ko lang. So, hindi natin nakikita or kunwari meetings. For example, ako, nako, guilty ako dyan. O, pati kape. Like, I, I, <laughs> oo, pati kape. Diba, kape, kape, kape tayo. Oh, okay. Yung kape, hindi natin nalilista as business expense. But oh. this is part of your expenses for the business. Correct. Next is, list down all possible sources of revenue. So, okay na tayo with the expenses for number one. Number two is, all possible revenue sources. So what do I mean by revenue sources? Um, let's give a concrete example, Siguro. Um, like Manila workshops, the possible sources of revenue of a workshop are sino ba nagbabayad sa'yo? Obviously, mga attendees. And another one, sponsors, di ba? So those are two samples of revenue sources for a particular business. Um, Tanungin kaya natin yung audience natin right now, Burn. What type of businesses are you looking at building? Or if you already have a business, what type of business are you in? So, um, kindly write or type na lang your answers in the questions box. Ayan, oo. On the, uh, sa panel natin. So that we'll know, di ba? We can, maybe we can give concrete examples on any cost components that normally... Uh, we fail to probably uh, include in our projections, no? Oh. Ayan, yeah, so the Excel link. Okay. Ayan. Uh, but I sorry, sorry, back. Sorry, pindot ko lang. How about the rest? Yan, so the Excel link, yan, madalas chan. When you meet with clients, um, coffee, de ba? I used to be with, I used to be involved in direct selling also, and ano, grabe ang gastos din, de ba? Kasi you would go Maybe, out with oh. clients. Totoo yan, every time. Direct selling din ako before since since college, hindi okay. direct selling ako. Yun ang problema ko nung college, no? Kala ko dami kong pera. Yung pala, laki din ng gastos oh. ka pa mapamasa. <laughs> laki din ng gastos. Oh. oh, and transportation, hindi natin yan ina-account for pagdating oh. sa negosyo, di ba? So, ang nakikita lang natin is yung commission natin when we sell the products that we sell. But when you minus everything, minus transportation, minus all of these things, um, 
Kung wala na pala tayong kinikita. Uh, yogurt smoothie shop. So, okay. yan. So, basically, I think na-mention na natin kanina in terms of food, eh, ba? ingredients, sampling, all of these things. So, possible sources of revenue. Um, let me give you another example of mga sikat na businesses like right now, like for example, mobile applications, diba? Mobile applications, there are a lot of things you can earn from users, diba? The people who pay to download the app, in-app purchases, meaning once you're in the app, you buy certain stuff inside the application, diba? So, kunwari, mga credits, game credits, tokens, kung ano man dyan nung binibenta nila online, diba? Inside the app pala. Another is sponsorship. Kung may, if you're playing a game, sa app, May mga ads na lumalabas. So, these are possible sources of revenue for technology businesses like that. Yon. So, so write all of your possible sources of revenue. Yes, sir? Yes, sa direct selling, no? isa din yan sa pwede mong ano, uh, maging sample. No? Mayroon kanya ka, iba't ibang sources of revenue. Bukod dyan sa pagbebenta mo, kung pagbebenta mo mismo ng product mo, pwede rin uh, another source mo is commission no? for for having a new uh, recruit under you or meron kang affiliate program. So, kada may nag-refer nag, uh, ng, ng iyong services or ng product mo, may kinikita ka pa ulit na commission. So, dapat yung mga ganun, uh, lilista mo. Saan ba nanggaling yung pumasok na pera sa iyo? Yeah, totoo yeah. yun. Okay. Yeah. Worry if these are just assumptions. Because sa tata lang, when you go into business, most of it talaga are assumptions. No, when, uh, on the onset, but you have to validate those assumptions through research that you do. So, marami naman kayo yung possible ways on how to validate it. You can talk to your friends. You can talk to. You can conduct focus group discussions. Focus group discussions are um, you gather six to eight people and then you talk about your okay. business idea mo and then get their I, their, get their insights. So, in terms of projection um, and assumptions related to the projections, you can assign naman certain values. Eh. Na kunwari, ah, feeling ko sa isang workshop, I can probably get 20 participants. So those are assumptions. But at least, you have a basis on on this parang diba, we're trying to get the return of investment so basically you have a clear basis on uh, the path that you need to take to reach that ROI oh so, kung gagawa okay. ka ng projection ng maganda rin ng assumption na maganda rin yung medyo realistic yung ilalagay mo kasi kung baka Correct. masyadong malaki naman eh baka ma-overwhelm ka hindi mo maabot no tapos ma-disappoint ka lang no? so tingnan mo ano ba yung feeling mo kasi may gut feel eh sundin so, mo din yung gut feel mo ano yung kaya mo uh, na, na gawin, no? So, doon mo pagbabasihan yung assumption mo. Okay, yes. Totoo yun. Totoo yun. So, so, now that you have yung assumptions, kasi uh, yung ROI mo basically is kailan ka ba kikita? So, yung income mo, my Minus yung source, basically yung sources of revenue mo, sources of revenue mo, less the cost, less your expenses, you will see clearly there kung kailan ka ba kikita as a business. So that is your return of on investment. So in terms of itong parachute fund, um, my advice kasi, kasi usually people say na, paano yan, wala akong... Uh, Paano ko masusustain yung negosyo ko kung wala akong finances or wala akong pera, di ba, to sustain it? Hanggang kailan ko kaya ito masusustain? So, if you know that ROI, alam mo na kung hanggang kailan yung pera mo. And yung parachute fund, yan yung pera mo that you will use so that you can sustain your business or your expenses until your ROI. So, um... So very clear sa mind mo na when you get into business, for example, malaman mo that in one year, you will reach your ROI. You know that, for example, every month you'll be spending 5000 So at least you know that your parachute fund should consist of that 5000 na isusustain mo hanggang sa mag-ROI ka on the, on, after one year. Correct. So ganon. So dapat may parachute fund burn. Tama, no? At uh, uh, gaya nga na nasabi mo, Ginger, no? dapat yung kanina may in, in relation pa rin doon sa assumption mo. No? Kung nakikita mo na ROI mo is makukuha mo within a year, dapat nga yung, yung monthly expenses mo, di meron ka din tamang assumption doon no? na ganito. So dapat pagbasihan mo na nga yung paglilista mo ng cost ng previous months mo. 
ito rin dapat ang magiging basihan mo for the next uh, for the succeeding months hanggang sa maabot mo yung ROI. Yes. And of course, don't forget ito pala, don't forget your personal expenses. Kasi baka, di ba kanina we were talking about ano yung responsibility mo in terms of yung expenses. So don't forget, baka naman yung parachute fund mo, you only allotted it for your business. Don't forget to include the personal expenses that is your responsibility, di ba? Nag-define kayo ng, ng spouse mo, di ba? Or ng parents mo na ako na bahala sa tubig or sa kuryente, ia-add mo rin yan dun sa parachute fund mo. Tama, tama. Yun. So, the next, uh, this is the sample of the projection sheet that I will send to you. So, if you have questions when you receive the sheet, feel free to email me and I will reply naman to you kung may mga tanong kayo about the template. Okay, so, matatakot yung next... template na yan, ah. At uh, simple lang yan kung tutuusin. Oh, uh, sim simple lang yan. I can, I can explain that to you once, you once you have received it. But basically, it's what we discussed kanina. Oh, wow. So, un very, ano naman siya, very simple. So, in case of an unfortunate incident, have a plan to take care of you and your loved one's needs. Bern, you, you want to explain this? Yan, tama yan. No? Uh, kanina nga, nabanggit natin na na nililista natin yung expenses natin, di ba, for, for your uh, desired business. At the same time, kailangan din na alam natin ano yung mga expenses natin for our personal at uh, family needs. Kaya bukod dito, sa pag-monitor ng expenses, dapat asama din natin na minomonitor yung ating uh, pag i no? Huwag natin kalilimutan, bago tayo gumastos, unahin natin yung pagtatabi. At bukod sa pagtatabi ng pera, dapat iniitindi natin yung kalusugan natin. In in, yeah, inisipin natin lagi na kung papasok tayo sa negosyo, darating yung time na baka magkasakit tayo dahil alam nyo na, talaga nakatuto ka sa, sa gusto mo maging negosyo, eh, na, 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 na de-drain yung katawan natin, yung isip natin, magkakasakit tayo. Kaya importante na meron tayong health insurance at the same time life insurance. Especially tayo, no, pag maging negosyo, meron tayong mga pamilya na umaasa sa atin. Pag may nangyari sa atin, ang tanong, meron bang papupunta sa pamilya natin na, na pera na gagamitin nila to sustain their needs? Kung wala, dapat meron kang health insurance or life insurance. Dahil yung proceeds na yun na magagamit nila na pang gasos nila. Yeah, correct. Um, actually, nung I, we have this friend, kami ni Bern, we have this friend, si Fitz. And uh, si Fitz kasi... Uh, he's a blogger, he's a financial blogger, and um, his advice was really, like for us, uh, I really listen to him when it comes to uh, managing expenses, and his advice was really for the breadwinner to get life insurance coverage then. So that's what we did, kami ng husband ko, siya, since siya yung may stable income then, and siya yung breadwinner, meron talaga siyang life insurance. Although ako, personally, I really start, I started with one, meron akong policy since I was 28. Nung 28, pata ako. So, matagal na bago, matagal na akong nagko-contribute doon. So, so, very important talaga, if you can start now, it's better for you to start, especially if you really want to go into business already. No? Okay. Alam mo, isa pang importansya ng, ano niya, ng life insurance, Ginger, no? yung, yung uh, kapag nawala tayo, namatay tayo, eh, yung negosyo mo or yung investments mo, hindi yan basta-basta malilipat eh sa pamilya mo, sa anak mo, sa asawa mo. Kailangan pa muna nila magbayad ng transfer tax o tinatawag na estate tax. So kung ang total investment mo, ang asset mo is around 20 million, so i-assume mo 20% nun, at least, ha, ang babayaran nila in cash sa BIR para lang matransfer sa kanila yung negosyo mo or yung investments more, even yung savings mo sa banko. So, napakahirap niya. Dahil kung wala silang pambayad, makifreeze lahat yung may iwan mo mga assets. No? So, importante yan kasi yung life insurance na taxable yan. Hindi yan finifreeze ng gobyerno. Kapag namatay ka, makukuha yan in cash. Yung proceeds na yan ng pamilya mo. At magagamit na lang pambayad sa estate tax. Yes. Oh, that's true. So, uh, there. So, establish also an emergency fund. So, this should be equivalent to at least three months of your monthly expenses. You know what? Um, di ba kanina we were mentioning about parachute fund? Mm -hmm. Iba pa to actually yung emergency fund natin. Kasi yung emergency fund, ito yung ginagamit natin, obviously, in case of emergency. <laughs> so, 
yung sinasabi nga ni Bern kanina na just in case ko nare magkasakit ka or sabi natin uh, uh, ano magkadengge ka or kung nabangga yung kotse mo ito yung mga, ito yung fund na gagamitin natin for that particular expense for those particular expenses de ba Bern Tama yun na ginger na tsaka isa pa no yung mga calamities yung natural na calamities nangyayari sa atin no bumabagyo bumabaha so kung may negosyo ka Siyempre, yung bahay mo rin, kung binagyo, hindi mo naman gagamitin yung parachute fund mo sa negosyo mo para ayusin yung bahay mo, no? Dahil personal mo na yun. Dapat, doon mo kukunin yung yes. emergency fund mo. Yes. So, grow your savings by investing in an affordable and liquid financial instrument. Like high-yield time deposits, mutual funds, UITFs, stock market, and retail bonds. So, we won't go on to explaining each of this already, no, Burn. But meron naman kami sa uh, Enter Entrepreneurship Series na dealing with finance naman, diba? Dealing with how to man- manage your finances when you go into business. Correct. But there. So the next is have a backup plan as to where you will get the funds for any unforeseen expenses for your business. So, meron akong tinatawag na may ibang tao kasi parang sinasabi nila na wala pa akong pera, hindi pa ganun kalaki yung pera ko para hindi ako comfortable to jump into starting a business but gusto ko na. Kasi I think it's the proper time. It's the pro- parang I'm ready already to take that leap. What do I do? So, I think you should consider having a bridge job. So what do I mean by a bridge job? A bridge job can actually, it's related to bullet point number two, can be a freelancing, uh, a freelance work or a VA work. Uh, VA means virtual assistance na work. Or pwede ka magbarista or any, any kind of job that you can do when you resign and you earn a stable income, actually, well, you freelance medyo hindi siya stable eh. but but something stable that can last you parang that can give you the flexibility also to start your own business for example if you decide to be a barista for uh part time and you work in the morning you will have your entire afternoon to focus on your business so that's what you call a bridge job for freelancing pwede rin naman basta you you set a particular time lang then for for you to do that freelance business while you're earning from it you start your own business diba so va work um meron naman yan for example your employer will tell you naman kung kailan any more required hours that you need to spend the buffer for that particular company and then the rest of the time you can do and build your business so these are um, this is one thing that you can consider doing when wala ka pang funds talaga to start your own business. Another is, another thing that you can look at is looking for an angel investor or venture capitalists who will be willing to loan you or give you additional funds in exchange for interest or equity. So what do we mean by angel investors and venture capitalists? So these are individuals or uh, corporations who invest in particular business ideas that they want to invest in. Right now in the Philippines, kasi, v, uh, venture capitalists or VCs and angel investors mostly look at um, tech startup companies. Uh, yeah, Ginger. Ayan, wala si Ginger, no? So, ayan. I'm sorry, nawala ba ako? Ayan, ayan, ako. Hello? Ayan. ayan, okay. So, okay, going back. So, I was talking about angel investors and venture capitalists, no? So, during the launch of Cyberpreneur, uh, one of the questions was, of the audience was, ano yung trend na nakikita mo uh, when it comes to business, when it comes to um, online businesses moving forward. So one of my answers was, I think there will be a more, um, there will be an increasing number of angel investors and venture capitalists who will who will um, invest in new ideas and new businesses in the Philippines. Because right now, the states is a big thing, diba? Parang anyone, the states can actually go to a person and say na I, I want to invest in your business dito kasi sa Pilipinas hindi masyadong um, 
hindi pa masyado. Hindi pa masyadong accepted yung ganong klaseng uh, pamamalakad when it comes to business. Kasi parang natatakot ang mga tao dito to invest in someone na hindi nila kilala uh, even if they think the idea is a bright idea. Diba? Sa atin kasi, miski na mag-meeting dito, di ba, Bern? Parang kailangan nakikita mo yung tao, kailangan magkape tayo, hindi, hindi pwedeng Skype lang. Parang, parang na, very important yung ganun sa Philippine saka, culture na nakikita mo ano, or kilala. O yung mga Pilipino, may talk, especially kung yung, yung business idea nila or yung specific idea nila, eh, baka makuha sa kanila. No? Ako, I have a personal experience mismo no? about a decade ago. Meron akong isang... Uh, Sabihin na natin parang invention ano, na, na ginagamit sa pagkain ng mga Chinese, no? which is in chopsticks. No? So, meron na kami naisip na idea ng ano ko, ng uncle ko. Tapos, ipinitch namin sa isang Taiwanese na, ano, na investor. No? So, pinisan yeah. sa kanya and all. Tapos, eventually, hindi na siya bumalik. Yung pala, na, 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 nalaman namin, kinuha niya yung idea namin. <laughs> At siya na mismo yung oh, no. <laughs> okay. sa Taiwan. So, yung mga ganong kaso yeah. rin. No? Na, I think, meron din ganong fear na baka agawin. No? Yung idea. Uh, so, it's, yeah, so it's very important actually. Uh, pero ako, I consider this an option. But it's very important also to check kung sino yung angel investor. Kasi hindi lang naman sila yung mag-check sa inyo eh. Kayo rin, kailangan as a business owner or as the owner of that particular idea, kailangan you check kung sino din yung pinagpapresentan mo ng idea. Kasi tama si Bird, baka maagaw. Kasi tulad niya, mga panahon niya, dapat alam niyo yung track record, yung palagay niyo nag-aalok sa inyo, yung mga kapitalist, ano? kasi baka mamaya, ngayon lang pala yan magsisimula. Kahit sabihin natin mayaman yan, eh, tignan din natin yung, ano niya, yung, yung reputation niya in the past. Ano? So, dapat talaga negosyante yan, talaga investor na merong mga uh, successful na ventures na in the past. Yes, yon. And very dapat trustworthy. Malalaman mo naman sa track record ng tao oh. eh, kung mapagkakatiwalaan mo ba siya. Um, okay, next is inspiration and mindset. So, I was telling, I was uh, actually sharing this nung first run nitong webinar na to, that I'm, I'm a person uh, not into, when, when I talk, basically, when I talk in my workshops, I, I'm not an inspirational kind of speaker talaga. So, very technical ako, very technical. I, I like to teach practical stuff, things mm-hmm. that you can actually do right away. So, pero, when, when I was doing my first few talks, I realized that very important ang inspiration and mindset. And even when I was doing my own business, I realized ko that if you don't have the proper mindset, whatever I teach you, whatever practical skills, or whatever, whoever teaches you practical skills and, and technical skills, walang kaso yun if, you're, if you don't have the proper mindset. Kasi mababali wala ang lahat. So, in this, in this particular segment, we will, well, we will share with you questions that you can ask yourself before you go into a business. Okay. One is, di ba tinatanong ng maraming tao, like, sabi natin kanina na, tinatanong nila, kailan ba ako dapat mag-resign? Okay na ba ako mag-resign? Dapat na ba ako umalis dito sa ginagawa ko ngayon at magtayo ng negosyo? So, ang question, ibabalik natin sa inyo. Have you learned all that you can from the current work or endeavor? Okay. What do I mean? Like, when I was in banking, a lot of, actually right now, a lot of people ask me, Ginger, nagre-regret ka ba na nag-start ka na lang mag-negosyo late already in your life? Kasi I see a lot of people na 20 plus pa lang, 21 pa lang, nagne-negosyo na, 19 pa lang, nagne-negosyo na. So, nagre-regret ka ba na hindi ka nagsimula mas maaga, mas bata? And ang sagot ko sa kanila, I don't regret anything. Because... I have been in the food industry. I have been managing the restaurant of my dad for two years. I was, I was into advertising. I was an account executive for for beauty brands, for telcos, for mobile for mobile phones, for maraming kinds of products. I worked in the bank for almost seven years. I was talking to different CFOs, uh, understanding the 
cash flow of different industries, BPO, semiconductors, uh, telco, you name it. And from all of these things that I've done for the past years of my life, I really learned a lot. And the learnings that I got from it, I apply now in my business. So I do not regret having all of those experiences before I actually started my own my own business. The reason why I left the banking industry, in fact, I was really happy in, in that company. I was, kahit nga, natatawa ka nga eh, kasi nag-resign na ako, tapos tinatanong ng asawa ko, bakit ganun, nag-uusap pa rin kayo about yung company nyo, wala, na nga, wala ka na nga doon, ang tawag mo pa rin sa sarili mo, um, parang part of that, employee ka pa rin doon, feeling mo employee ka pa rin. Kasi talagang, parang nasiyahan talaga ako doon sa, sa work ko that time. But I, I resigned because I knew that I already, parang alam ko na lahat ng mga, parang nakuha ko na na lahat ng lessons na dapat nabigay sa akin ng particular ng particular job na yon. Parang may hinahanap na ako. I have the feeling na kailangan iba naman. Parang kailangan may, I realize na parang dapat may mas iba na akong hinahabol. Mas malaking thing na dapat ang kabulin ko. And I know that I could only be, parang I could only be put at ease pag negosyo ko na sarili ang iisipin ko. Yun. Galing, galing. So, ako naman, any thoughts ginger, on that? Perfect. Ako naman, Ginger, no? Ako, ah, uh, Nabanggit mo nga kanya na nasa abroad ako for, for more than five years. Ano? At uh, kumikita ako ng malaki doon. At uh, nag enjoy kami sa kumikita ko sa aking work na yun. But at the same time, naiisip din namin ng asawa ko na, na meron kami pangarap na negosyo. Eh. So hindi namin magawa yon Paano namin ma-achieve yun? Kung nandito kami sa abroad, no? hindi namin matututukan ito. Alright, meron kami mga ibang mga part-time na negosyo. Uh, Kailan-ilan na online na uh, racket. Pero... Kumbaga, hindi pa yun talaga yung gusto namin na umpisa ng negosyo. Eh. So, the decision comes nung nakita namin na meron naman pala kami ano, uh, fix na income na darating kung mag resign kami abroad. So, nung nakita namin na meron na fix na dumarating na income, na-decide na kami na umuwi. Dahil alam namin na uh, mag- mag-fail man o hindi o yung negosyo namin na to, meron nang pumapasok sa amin. Kaya na, nabanggit natin. Yeah. Yun, eh, dapat may mga bridge jobs tayo, no? At uh, alam natin na meron tayong uh, pagkukuhanan ng iba pang pondo kung sakali man na uh, bumagsak yung plano natin ng negosyo. So, at siguro yung uh-huh. sa akin na uh, nag-inspire sa akin na uh, kahit na medyo late na ako, malapit na ako mag-40, ano, pero ganyan lang natin na pag-decide na mag-negosyo sa Pilipinas. No? So, hindi ano, walang ano eh, walang, hindi na ito masasabi na late, late ka pagdating sa pag-negosyo. No? Ako, ang inspiration ko, yung inspiration ko si, ano, si Colonel Sanders, di ba yung KFC? So, 60 years old. Yeah. Yeah, 60 years old na nung, nung maging successful yung kanyang business. At kita nyo naman ngayon ang KFC, di ba? Tapos isa pa siguro si Henry Ford. At 40 plus na siya. Yung Ford Motors. Yung uh, coaches. Yeah. So, yun. Tingin ko sa tingin nung nakita ko sa sarili ko na okay na siguro. Nasa 40 ako. Pagkat mo na 40. Saka pala magbubong yung negosyo na gusto ko. So, negosyo. you should be inspired din na hindi pa huli yung lahat. No? Basta tamang-tama yung pag-prepare nyo, base doon sa napag-usapan natin, ma-achieve nyo yung, ano nyo, yung dream nyo na makapag-negosyo sa Pilipinas. Yeah. Okay, next topic. So, ay guys, don't, ano ah, kung may tanong kayo, feel free to type it dyan sa panel ninyo kasi we can read it while, while we're having this discussion naman or having this conversation. So next is, do you know the reasons why you want to create a business? So what do you want to achieve? So before ka pumasok sa isang negosyo, try to think why do you want to build this business? I know a lot of people might say, um, gusto ko kasi, ano na eh, uh, an- parang another source of income, di ba? Pero for what? Dig deeper, try to dig deeper and try to your to ask yourself, bakit mo kailangan yung extra source of income? Bakit mo kailangan ng additional finances? For what it for what uh, is it, ba? So, kasi bakit natin kailangan malaman yung reasons why? Bakit ba lagi nilang sinasabit? So, diba? Parang lahat ng speaker na ma-attend ko in terms of entrepreneurship sinasabi sa akin na kailangan kong isipin yung reason ko why. Because there are a lot of times in the in my life nung naging negosyante ako na parang gusto ko ng 
bumigay. Alam mo yun, like, parang ayoko na. Gusto, ay, ayoko na, parang nahihirapan na ako. The only thing that kept me going really burn and, and the people who are listening is the only thing is I thought of my reason why I was doing this and it was because I wanted to spend, uh, it was because I wanted to spend more time with my daughter. Eventually in the future, I gusto ko na ng passive income and um, yun, and really put more time for the family and make more time for the family. And I know during the first few years of business, hindi ko siya ma-achieve. Definitely, hindi ko yan ma-achieve. Kasi when you build a business, don't expect na mas magaan yung load kaysa nung time na employed ka. I will tell you right now na this is the busiest I've ever been in my entire life. As in, ganun. Ganun ako ka-busy. So, diba, Bern? Sa totoo lang, diba? Sobrang busy natin as entrepreneurs. Oh, ako ako dyan, no? Sabi ko nga nung nung employee ako, ako napaka-busy ko naman. Nasa opisina ako, hindi ko na... At pag nagdegosyo ko siguro, may time na akong gawin yung mga gusto ko, ganyan. Pero, pero hindi pala, ano, kabalik tara. So you have to, to be... Kabalik tara! Oo, oh, oo, oh, oo. Oh, mas busy. Mas busy. Mas busy. Tapos sa sa work nga, pwede mo na lang sabihin na para ah, basta ma-meet ko yung deadline. Ito, ikaw yung gagawa ng deadline at ikaw ang gagawa. Tama. <laughs> diba? So, um, but but I know, but what I know in terms of business, that's why I want to, to I, 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 am, I am happy that I have my own business, is that in the future, it will really allow you your flexibility. And even now, flexibility of time. Uh-huh. And in the future, I know that when I build this right, when I build it correctly, it will give me passive, it will give me passive income, and I can eventually live the life that I want, right? Because uh-huh. when you're an employee, ka, hindi ka naman pwedeng maging hindi ka pwedeng maging owner ng company na yon, di ba? So, para saan? Nag-work ka towards what, di ba? So, yun yung maganda kasi sarili mo, sarili mong idea, pinalaki mo, and in the future, sa'yo yan, di ba? Sa'yo yan. Yun yung, yun yung gusto ko. So, always go back to the reasons why. Kasi there will be, yun yung point, there will be a lot of times when you want to give up hindi mo na kaya, hindi mo na alam kung paano mo pa i-continue and you will think of that reason why. Tama yun, Ginger. Na pareho tayo na ako kasi family-oriented din talaga ako. No? Sabi ko sarili ko noon, kung magninegosyo ko, dapat meron akong ano, magagawa ko yung yung oras na gusto ko, magbibigay ko yung oras na gusto ko na makasama yung, yung pamilya ko, especially yung anak ko. No? Lalo na sa tulad natin, no? mga bata pa yung anak natin dapat talaga may oras tayo sa sa kanila. Eh, pag nasa corporate ka, talagang ano eh, kakainin oras mo. Ako minsan umiiyak na ako hating gabi na. Tapos sa alis ka uli na maaga, no? Wala kang time. Dito sa pagnunugosto, oo, oh, busy ka. Pero kayang-kaya mong i-adjust 'yun. Kayang-kaya mong isingit yung oras na gusto mo na para kasama mo yung pamilya mo. Ako as a online entrepreneur, kasama ko sila habang nagnenegosyo ako. Yeah. So related to that, Bern, yun yung next question natin. Are you ready to adjust your lifestyle, spend less, and work more hours? Mm-hmm. So yan yung isang question na dapat tanungin talaga. Kasi hindi siya spend, ano eh, hindi siya spend less working. Pero normally talaga, ano eh, mas maraming oras talaga ang inaambag mo sa sa business kasi walang walang deadline walang duration you work 24/7 you work on the weekends you work so ganon so are you ready for that kind of lifestyle yun yung isang question next is are you ready for a lot of times when you need to multitask Eko Bird have you have you experienced this Nako. a lot of times pag mo multitask ka? alam alam mo hanggang ngayon no, kahit na may mga staff tayo talaga hindi maiwasan na ano eh gawin mo yung dapat na ginagawa din nila. Ano? Kasi alam mo ba, uh, ikaw yung nasa sarili mo, ano yung purpose mo, ano yung uh, desires mo, no? na minsan wala dun sa, sa mga tao mo. No? Kaya minsan na talaga dapat nakadelicate na yan. Ako pa rin yung, ano, yung gumagawa. Yung ultimong pag-email, no? inaasayan ko na yung pag-email. Pero dahil gusto kong mangyari agad, ako na mismo yung gumagawa. Ako na rin yung sumasagot. 
So, nandun din yung ano eh, nandun din yung, yung uh, uh, urgency kapag ikaw ang nag, nag-negosyo. No? So, dapat ikaw ang mag-negosyo, ready ka na dumating yung time na to na hindi mo din masasabi kasi na mangyayari doon sa mga tao mo. Pwede magkasakit sila or biglang umalis sila. Dapat alam mo kung ano yung gagawin mo pag nawala sila kasi baka masyado ka nakaasa sa kanila, ano yung magagawa yan? Baka mawalan ka ng kliyente. So, related to this, actually, the first step, well, one of the first steps that you need to take when you start your own business is identify different processes. So, yeah. dapat, like ako, may mga process ako na um, for marketing, process for sales, process for uh, cr- product creation, operational processes, admin processes. So, these are the things na parang umpisa pa lang you as the owner should identify already. Uh-huh. And then, and that's why dapat ready ka to multitask because obviously on the onset, you won't have a perfect team kagad or you won't have anyone right away, di ba? Nung, uh-huh. nung Manila workshops, ay, naalala ko nung first few months ng Manila workshops, it was just me. Ako na yung receptionist, <laughs> ako yung kumukuha ng online um, registration, ako na bumibili ng kape, ako nagsiset up, and yung husband ko nandun to to bring yung projector, siya yung nagkakabit ng laptop. So kaming dalawa actually, kaming dalawa. So there so ang advice ko talaga is you start with um ah okay, may tanong tayo. Did you also code the website? Yung husband ko EJ naka nakatukayo mo. Tama, di ba? Katukayo mo. EJ uh-huh. then yung name niya. My husband is actually very techy. So siya yung nag-program siya yung gumawa ng website ko, siya yung lahat ng technical, siya yung nag-set up ng sites ko, hosting, bumili ng domain, lahat siya yun. So, um, yun. So, but there are times talaga, going back, na you really need to be the one who will do all of these things. Especially yung setting up the processes. Kasi ikaw yun. And then, um, ang maganda doon, yung sinasabi nga ni Bern, now that he has a staff, you... Um, slowly but surely cascade different processes to different individuals. So, for example, makakita ka ng pwedeng person for marketing, meron ka ng process in place. And you will brief that person na, okay, marketing person, ito yung process ko for marketing. So, ngayon, wala na yung headache mo, di ba? In terms of marketing, uh, when you meet another person naman na magaling sa sales, you cascade the sales process. And before you know it, all of the, may mga katulong ka na and you can focus on the bigger picture. Ayan. So, the next idea is, ah, okay, timing in terms of personal, in terms of your personal life. Yan. So, very important na to know if is it the proper time na based on yung mga nangyayari dito? So, what do I think about? What do you mean personal time? Diba? So, one is, I think we discussed this briefly a while ago. Are you, ask yourself, are you in perfect health? Is everyone in your family in perfect health? Do you have your own insurance coverage for protection? So, ito, as in sakit ko to, never kami, naga, <laughs> lagi namin nakakalimutan magpa-annual check-up. Pero don't forget that. Really don't forget that. Because when you go into business, sabi nga ni Bern, yung mga hindi mo inaasahan, di ba? The, dapat medyo alam mo na eh, naplan, napagplanuhan mo na eh, na in good condition kayo, in perfect health kayo, so that hindi ka na surprise na bubulagaan ng kung ano-ano mang mga concerns, di ba, Bern? Tama, tama. No? Kasi alam mo ba kung, kung, kung bakit kayo nagsimula ng negosyo, di ba, para sa pamilya niya naman, hindi naman niya para sa ibang tao lang. No? First and foremost, gusto niyo mabigyan ng magandang buhay yung pamilya niyo. Pero paano ka magkaroon magandang, uh, magandang buhay ang pamilya mo kung ikaw mismo eh? Ada da, da, down of, of your health, no? Tapos uh, lahat kayo may sakit sa pamilya. Eh, ano pa mangyayari sa negosyo na gusto nyo? Baka mapunta lang sa kapitbahay nyo yung, yung, yung kinikita ng negosyo nyo. So, importante na talaga na healthy tayo. Dahil, ano ba yung ibang purpose yung negosyo nyo kapupunta nyo? Kundi para sa inyo din. Oo, oh, and maganda mag-start in perfect health dahil nagde-deteriorate yung health mo pag may negosyo ka. Joke! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Kasi diba, sa totoo lang, get ready for sleepless nights, mga nights na parang iniisip mo kung anong next strategy mo, uh-huh. ano yung susunod mong gagawin, ano susunod mong gagawin, ano, saan ka kukuha ng funds para sa next project, or, you know, so, very important. Ano pag-isip talaga eh. 
Oh, oh, very stress. important. Not perfect. Exactly. Mas stress ka talaga in perfect health. And don't forget to be active always. So exercise regularly and get into sports if you can. Not only because gusto natin maging in perfect health kayo, but these are things that will help you um, focus, become, become more focused, I mean. Kasi sa totoo lang, we cannot think about work like 24-7. Eh. You need to have downtime. Very important ang downtime when you become an entrepreneur. And and as an entrepreneur, you dictate kung anong ginagawa mo sa oras mo. Eh. And dapat, meron kang oras para sa sarili mo. Very important ang me time. Diba? Kasi, Tama ka. ano eh, Diba? Ikaw, Bern. Ikaw lang may time ko na. Diba, tulad na yung laging mo compare no? Kahit na sa isang uh, gadget, sa isang technology. Sabi natin computer, no? Kahit ang computer, kinakailangan mo din yung shutdown yan pa minsan-minsan, eh. Hindi pwedeng, ano, laging tuloy-tuloy lang yung nakababa. Yung mga madadali ang buhay niyan. The same thing with us, no? Hindi pwedeng lahat ng oras naman na nasa patutok lang tayo sa negosyo, no? Kailangan, bigyan din natin ng oras, at least na ilang oras lang a week na makapagpahinga tayo at gawin yung mga bagay na nakakapagpasaya sa atin. Kasi wala nang ibang ako di para maging masaya ka at ang pamilya. Oo. And eat healthy food. Yan, importante yan. Kasi like ako guilty ako na pag very, pag uh, sobra akong engrossed sa ginagawa ko, hindi ako kumakain. As in, <laughs> nagkakape lang ako. So, yan, sakit sakit ko yan. And a lot of entrepreneurs napapansin ko gano'n, hindi kumakain or pag kumakain, puro chips kasi gusto nila nasa harap pa rin sila ng computer uh-huh. at nagtatrabaho. So, wag. Very unhealthy yung gano'ng klaseng lifestyle. So, we need to be, we need to think about that and always actually think about it. Not only before you start your business, but constantly eh. It constantly iniisip natin yan. So, also, get insurance coverage for at least a breadwinner of the family. I think we mentioned this a while ago already. Correct. Next is, are you ready to take on multiple roles and juggle your schedule? So, let's talk about productivity, di ba? So, Maraming natatanong dyan, dyan dami mong ginagawa. <coughs> like, right now, I have six companies, six businesses. Okay, six, yeah, literally six companies. And people ask me, paano mo siya ginagawa? Tapos, mommy ka pa, may anak ka pa. Um, Siyempre, um, you have to tend to your husband also. Paano kayo nagdadate? <laughs> Kailan kayo nagdadate? Oh. You know, but, but seriously, um, what I tell them is every day is a constant struggle talaga. It's a it's a constant battle of how to juggle work and life. Wala siyang perfect wala siyang perfect um, what do you call this? Combination. Wala siyang perfect way on how to determine na parang ah, today, perfect yung work, life, yung work life balance ko. The balance ko talaga siya. Parang walang ganun eh. Walang ganun talaga. And every day may biglang susulpot na ay, kailangan ko mag-adjust, kailangan ko iurong tong meeting na to because nagkasipon si Zika, yung anak ko, or kailangan ko i-danin sa doctor, or may presentation sila sa school, or kailangan ko bumili ng materials for her. Tapos, at the same time, parang may meeting ka, yung mga ganon. So, may mga perf- walang perfect way to handle that. But there are ways that you can manage, that can help you manage it. It's just Share ko yung mga stuff na ginagawa ko. Ako, big big deal sa akin ng Google Calendar. So, a lot of people who who want or who want to meet up, like when it's related to Manila workshops or even family, do you know that I ask my husband to book a date with me through Google Calendar? <laughs> Ganun ako ka OC when it comes to yung go, yung schedule. Kasi yun yung chine-check ko burn, yun yung chine-check ko every day. Pagkagising ko, ano yung schedule ko today. So, kailangan naka-Google Calendar siya for me. For me to know kung kailan, kung ano yung, mga, ano yung schedule ko for the day. Also, di ba, we were talking about me time. I book yung me time ko sa calendar. Kasi you really need to set aside time eh. Pag hindi mo siya nilagay sa calendar, hindi mo may isip na, kailangan ko nga pala ng downtime. Totoo lang. Parang sa'yo, yung free time mo, is time to work again. Ganun. Ganun yung mga, wala, ganun yung mga nakikita ko, mga friends ko na, na, na entrepreneurs, sa business owners. Wala silang downtime. Pag hindi nila sinasabi na downtime ko to, kung hindi klaro sa mind nila na downtime nila yon 
So uh, other tools that you can use, I use Slack for messaging, yung team ko. Kasi, um, well, some of them we message through Facebook. Pero the thing with Facebook Messenger, mahirap kasi hanapin yung mga past monitor. messages. Oo, di ba, Bird? Mahirap kayo. Parang, saan na pala tayo nag-usap about this? Hindi mo na mapapastrack. Basta-basta. Kahit napakisearch mo, minsan hindi lalabas yung keyword eh. Correct, di ba? Hindi lalabas. So, ang Slack, it's a tool that we use na you can backtrack based on the topic that you talked about. So, maganda siya. Maganda siya. You, you, should, you guys should try it. Another one is Trello or Asana. So, these are project management tools. I normally use Trello talaga for, for yung teams ko. But I, I heard, well, we tried it once. Yung Asana is, is a pretty good tool also. How about you, Bern? Ano, ikaw? What do you do to... Ako, I also use Google Calendar, Google Calendar ano? At uh, yung iba pang... Uh... Uh, meron ako mga dinadownload ng mga software. Ako, meron akong software doon na ginagamit ko sa project management at sa auditing. Siya rin ginagamit ko minsan sa aking pag-negosyo at yung aking everyday uh, li- uh, work-life balance na tinatawag natin. No? Pero unang-una sa akin talaga ay uh, when I wake up in the morning, no? uh, and I know some of you may not be that religious, pero ako talaga yung una ko, unang-una ko sa umaga ay magdasal and uh, have at least an hour with my family, with my daughter. So after noon, kahit na ano na yung nakaschedule yung gagawin ko na basta importante lang sa umaga, sila yung maging inspiration mo for the rest of the day. Huwag sila yung gagawin yung consumption nyo for the rest of the day. Sila dapat yung maging inspiration. So yun ang aking, aking uh, uh, mantra kung pag araw-araw. Oh, and of course, syempre, ako medyo uh, traditional ako eh. Meron ako laging dalang notebook din, no? So yung iski, meron akong planner. Doon ako nagsusulat lahat din. So aside sa mga digital na ano na paraan ng pag-monitor and to manage the schedule, meron pa rin akong planner na ginagamit. So yung mga kinukuha niyo diyan sa ano, sa Starbucks, sa CBPL, yun oh! yan, wag niyo yang pan-display lang. <laughs> Yeah, totoo, gamitin nyo, gamitin nyo. <laughs> hindi, yan, hindi yan pang display. Totoo. Okay, next is, have you aligned your plans with your family? So, okay, kami, nung before I got into Manila workshops or yung business ko, yung mga businesses ko now, I was actually pregnant at the time. So, uh, before I took the leap, into starting my own business. Nag-usap talaga kami ng asawa ko and we decided that uh, I put up the business, I build a business and I make it grow and he stays in the corporate world para may stable income kami. So, ganun. So, aligned naman kami sa plano and until now, um, until the business is okay, that's the time when uh, probably in the future, I we can both start our own businesses already, di ba? So, although now we have a common business that we already started on the side, which is which is one of the mobile applications that we're doing. Um, but yun, so very important to align with your family and if you're single, align with your parents. Ikaw, Bern, what do you uh, Tama na, pareho tayo, Ginger. Na. From the start talaga, eh, nag-uusap kami ng asawa ko, no? dapat yung, kung ano man yung papasokan namin, kay investment yan or negosyo, kailangan naka, naka-align yan. Ibig sabihin na, uh, hindi yan makaka-apekto sa buhay ng pamilya namin. Ano? Kumbaga, hindi makakompromise dapat yung time at yung, uh, yung aming pag-enjoy kaysa pagsasama-sama no? bilang family. No? Dapat yung negosyo na papasukin namin ay merong uh, involvement ang lahat. So kaya kami, most of our businesses are online. Kaya lagi kami magkasama. So, kasi meron mga negosyo kami balak na suk noon na makakainin eh. Parang nasa corporate life din ako. So parang malayo sila. Minsan no, mga, may mga araw na hindi ko sila makakasama. Eh hindi namin tinuloy yung negosyo na yun. So dapat yung, yung yeah. plano, naka-align talaga dun sa pagkasunduan nyo ng asawa nyo kung ikaw ay married na. Kung single ka naman, natural ang uh, ating ka na magkulang mo. No? Dapat alam nila kung ano yung uh, mga sa'yo. Nasa na yun? Numinitin pa? <laughs> 12 na lang kami. <laughs> oh, dapat aligned with your parents. Okay, okay. Are there other major changes in your life right now that might affect your current lifestyle? So, yun nga, di ba, kanina where you were talking about yung expenses na sana yung process na yun, you do it for six months first before you actually start yung business. Kasi yung process of tracking, process of monitoring, because you have to have that particular habit already before you get into a business. Diba? Ito naman, parang 
why do you need to think of major changes? Because, syempre, it will, that particular major change will affect the way your current lifestyle mo. So, hindi yan yung normal in your hindi yan yung normal scenario in your life or normal case, de ba? Na parang yan yung, hindi yan yung daily life mo. Ika nga parang ganon. Hindi siya a day in your daily life. <laughs> Kasi sometimes, diba, for example, there may mga major changes. Kunwari, magpapatayo ka ng bahay. Hindi naman normal yun eh, na every time magpapatayo ka ng bahay. Oh. Diba? So, so, kung isasabay mo siya sa business, you're thinking of both things. Magpapatayo ka ng bahay at the same time, magtatayo ka ng negosyo. Or, that, and, kunwari, yung time na like, I went into business, inisip ko rin ano yung changes sa buhay ko dahil buntis ako. So, magbe-breastfeed ka. So, definitely, inisip ko that time, paano ko gagawin na nag-workshop, nag-conduct ng workshop, yung, di ba? At the same time, nagbe-breastfeed. So, yun yung mga stuff na kailangan mong isipin if you're going through major changes. How will it affect your lifestyle? So, Bern, kayo ba may major changes kayo nung yeah, yeah, when Ginger. you started? Oo, oh, tama. Ginger, kasi tulad niya nabanggit ko, no? yung, yung nakasanayan namin before na mga gawin sa, sa abroad, naisip namin no, na pag tagtuloy kami yung negosyo sa Pilipinas, hindi na katulad nung, ano, nung, nung ginagawa namin doon, yung lifestyle na nung doon, panibagong buhay na ulit kapag nandito sa Pilipinas. Eh. Kasi unang-una, panibago na yung ano niya, yung... yung uh, tawag ito, yung, yung living expenses mo. Either tumataas na tapos yung, yung income mo hindi na tulad ng dati. So, merong adjustment na mangyayari. No? Tapos at the same time, yung, yung uh, pag, pag, pagpunta namin sa Pilipinas, nagpagawa rin kami ng, ano, ng bahay. No? Hindi pa tapos actually. <laughs> Pero uh, yung, yung ginawa namin yun, yung pag-decide namin na yun, Actually, na-accept na namin na, na pagplanuhan namin. Ito na yung risk na mangyayari. At least, napagplanuhan namin na ito mga dapat gawin while we're doing our business. So, adjust namin yung lifestyle namin kung what we're doing before, kung ano yung yeah. situation namin ngayon. Yes. Ayun. So, think about that, guys. So, the last T, the last um, in our acronym, the letter T in our acronym, timing when it comes to business. So, the first one is, do you have a solid and concrete business plan with at least a three-year projection? So, um, bakit importante ang business plan? I'll go through the bullet points first uh, before I discuss ko ano yung thoughts ko on this. So, a business plan eliminates a fear of the unknown. So we will have a clear direction as uh, to what we want to achieve for our business at a certain point in time. We get to make sound business decisions since we already have laid out all of the possible scenarios in our mind. And the business plan need not be long. In fact, for my business, we just use one-page business canvas. So, Okay, yung thoughts ko on this kasi, marami nga nagsasabi, parang may idea na ako, gusto ko nang gawin right away. Hindi ko na kailangan magsulat. Mm-hmm. Ayoko magsulat, tinatamad ako magsulat, di ba? Ganon, or mag-type. Uh-huh. Ayoko mag-type. But the, the importance of a business plan is that you cannot store everything in your brain, di ba? I mean, kahit na sino eh, kahit na yung mga the most intelligent of the most intelligent people na ma-meet mo, they cannot store everything in their brain. So you need to write it down so that you can go through all of these possible scenarios, all of the possible scenarios, all of the possible um, factors that will affect your business and ma- may mababalikan kayo. Kasi kung tinor mo lang sa brain mo, makakalimutan mo yun eh. Makakalimutan mo talaga na parang ano nga ba yung inisip ko dito sa strategy na to? Oh. Or sa marketing plan ko na to, di ba? So, ganun. Tama. Hindi, hindi, naman, hindi naman one terabyte <laughs> yung utak mo para oh. mo lahat yung ano mo. No? Lagi nga na, oh, lagi and, makakalimutan and, mo yan. Makakalimutan mo. So, you, you need to write it down. And another thing, it doesn't have to be long. In fact, if, if doon sa mga people who book mentoring sessions with me, I have this available in, in Manila Workshop Shop. 
So my mentoring session is available in the shop of Manila Workshops. We can go through. Ang mentoring sessions ko man pwedeng Skype for those na kahit na wala dito, yung mga kababayan natin abroad. But I have this session where I take you through just the one page business canvas. So at the end of the mentoring session, you will have a ready business canvas that you can work with and you can already implement. So hindi naman kailangan mahaba burn eh, di ba? Ang business plan talaga. Basta alam mo yung mga ano eh, mga factors, mga areas na dapat mong identify. Actually, hindi kailangan conventional na business plan yung mga usual na ginagamit ng mga sa schools ano, yung mga recommend ng mga mga gurus na sinasabi natin, no? Actually, yung wife ko no mas effective sa kanya pag business plan just using a notebook. So dun lang yung nilista lahat ng mga gusto niyang mangyari yung mga costing niya, yung, yung kanyang mga uh, projections, nandun doon lang sa kanyang notebook para sa kanya, mas effective siya. Ang importante for her, and na-identify niya, na, na-isusulat niya, hindi yung nasa isip lang niya yung kanyang mga plano. Yeah, yun. So, um, kung may questions kayo, feel free to write it down in the panel, on the on your panel. So, para masagot din namin ni Bern yan, yeah. mga tanong nyo. Uh, next is, do you know what your strengths are that you can utilize for this business to work? Do you know your weaknesses? Have action plans on how to address these. So, important talaga before you start your own business na ma-identify mo kung ano yung mga strengths and weaknesses mo. Why? Because obviously when you know what your strengths are, you can concentrate on that, on parts of the business where you can exercise these strengths. Tapos yung weakness naman, you, you will know what to do with, with these weaknesses. For example, kung nga rin sabihin mo, ay mahina ako sa marketing. So what you can do right now is you can um, outsource probably, look for an outsource service provider, yung mga nag-offer ng, for example, digital marketing services, or pwede ka maghanap ng partner na magaling sa marketing, di ba? So, alam mo kung ano ngayon yung dapat mong gawin with these weaknesses and with, with the strengths that you have identified, di ba? Alam mo, Ginger, no? ako ang coach ko, dalawa eh, no? Para yung nagbibigay sa akin ng advice at ng uh, katotohanan, ano, kung, kung ano ba talaga yung strengths ko and weaknesses. So, una yung, yung parent ko, yung mother ko. Padalawa, yung asawa ko. Kasi sa kanila ko na din, uh-huh. ano yung mga bagay na ayaw ko madinig. <laughs> so, hindi, hindi nila ako pinapasaya. Pinapa, dinidisappoint nila ako actually. Pero yung pagdidisappoint nila na yun, nakikita ko ano yung weaknesses ko. At, at na-address ko ano yung dapat kong gawin para ma- ma- maitama ko yung aking action plans. At the same time, sila yung nagsasabi, uy, sang, dito ka magaling. Dapat dyan ka mag-focus. So, importante talaga uh-huh. yung feedback Oh, very important. Tapos, actually, kahapon, we, nung dun sa isang webinar that we had for Manila Workshops yesterday evening with Marv and Martin Daluna, yung blogging webinar, um, we were discussing about the importance of mentorship also. Like, um, kami mismo, like, kami, mga mentors din, I'm sure, si, yan, si Bern, mentor din yan, we value having our own mentors also because kailangan mo ng kabot kabatuhan ng ideas kasi. Mababaliw ka eh kung ikaw lang ang, alam mo yun, ikaw lang nag-iisip, wala kang kausap. So, you get to, you should, parang, you should have someone, yan, pwedeng asawa mo, or pwedeng kapatid mo, you, it can be, it can be your friend, someone who you can discuss your business with. Tsaka, alam mo, maganda rin, diba? yung ano, nag-collaborate with other people na alam mo yung reputation nila and yung track record nila, success record nila sa kanilang uh, ventures, no? Kasi you will learn a lot from them. And I know, uh, based on experience, yung mga successful na mga tao, talagang gusto, gusto nila makatulong din sa iba. So talaga importante na you, you network with the uh, right people at uh, you collaborate with them with projects. Yeah, si Ginger, no? Actually, uh, nag-collaborate uh, din kami before from another project. Ito, no? ito yung result ng aming uh, mga current projects. No? So, uh, dahil din dito, may manakikilala kami pa mga tao. At actually, ako personally, may mga attendees kami before sa uh, last ent- enter entrepreneurship na meron kami din ano, na, na pag-usapan na project. Na actually, no, we're, we're starting an, an on- uh, online English learning uh, portal no? at uh, nasa business planning stage na kami. So, eto itong pag-attend nyo ng ganitong uh, seminars, online na uh, uh, itong mga webinars, 
eh, isang uh, pinturing sa inyo na opportunity to meet uh, people that you can uh, uh, work with in the future. Yes, that's true. So, we have a question here. What's your take on taking out a loan to start a business? Well, um, a lot of, when you start a business here in the Philippines, especially with yeah, new banks, when you want to loan from them, they ask for at least an audit and financial statement of three years. So, medyo mahirap, unless you're getting a personal loan. Ha? So, ang take ko naman in loans is, well, ako, personally, if you don't, uh, if kaya mong walang loan, better. But, kung kaya mo naman, and if you see in your projections and you include it in your expenses and kaya mong bawiin or kaya mong bayaran yung loan mo based on yung assumptions and projections mo, then go for it. Pero yun nga eh, dito sa Philippines talaga, if you're taking out, uh, taking on a corporate uh, loan, hindi sila papayag pag less than 3 years ka in business. So malamang personal loan lang yung uh, makukuha mong loan. There. So thank you for that, Chris. Chris. May dagdag ko lang, Ginger, no? So kung meron man sa inyo yeah. na sa abroad, try nyo rin na uh, uh, i-inquire uh, sa mga banko nyo dyan sa, kung sa mga bansa kayo. No? Kasi for ah, yeah, example, in the Middle East, uh, you can actually uh, take a loan with just uh, presenting your ID. Actually, yun, kung ano man yung national ID na ginagamit nyo dyan, or residence ID, tapos uh, certification lang from your company. Minsan ganun lang kasimple eh. Uh, mas mababa pa yung ano yung mga rates ng ano interest rates ng banko diyan ano pero of course titignan niyo din baka mamaya eh merong mga uh, legal implication niya no baka mamaya pag hindi kayo nakapagbayad on time baka alam niyo na may mga bansa na nagkukulong actually pag merong kang utang no titignan niyo din pero ako based on my experience in the Middle East Saudi Arabia and the UAE merong uh, facilities sa mga banko diyan para magpa-loan sa mga OFWs at napakababa ng ano Interes. At actually, yung isa ko sa nagamit sa isang negosyo ko dito sa Pilipinas. Okay. Yeah. So, next is, uh, do you know the capital that you need for your business when when your return on investment will be and what is your break-even point? So, yun. I think we already discussed this. Bakit pala important yun? Sorry. Important na malaman mo yung ROI mo because when you present and meet potential investors, you can easily tell them na, okay, uh, Mr. So-and-so, you know what, mababawi namin yung capital na in-invest nyo sa amin by this point in time. So, syempre, gusto yun ng investors kasi they know what to expect, they know yung risk that they they are facing, diba? they know how to mitigate it whenever, uh, for example, that doesn't happen. But, but basically, gusto nila malaman talaga when the return on investment will be because it's their investment. Tama. Actually, ako, so, when I'm asking for ano, yung other people to invest in our uh, startup business, lagi yung tinatanong dyan, show me the numbers. no Show me your projections. Kasi kung wala ka mapakita, paano kita matutulungan? Yes, correct. Yun. So, lagi nila tinatanong yan um, for the people listening, kung gusto nyo mag-present sa investors, you really need to have that ready, yung projections nyo. So there, so that's fit again, financials, inspiration and mindset, timing when it comes to personal life and timing when it comes to your business. Now, eto, maraming tano- taong nagtatanong sa amin, so, saan ka ba nakakakuha ng business idea? And how do you make these business ideas happen? Ako, personally, um, for me, business, business ideas, it, it's, it stems from creativity. And don't tell me, kasi marami siya, so paano yan, hindi ako creative, so wala talaga akong maiisip na business idea. But no, creativity is actually a process. So like any kind of, it's a skill, sorry, it's a skill. So like any kind of skill, you can build on it. So pinapractice yan. What do you mean by build on it? Pinapractice talaga. I think, during the first run, I mentioned that in my blog, Mommy Ginger, I wrote uh, something about uh, creativity. Diba? Parang, how do you harness that? How do you come up with business ideas? And ako, sa totoo lang, ako, marami akong business ideas na naisip ko habang tumatakbo sa treadmill, habang naliligo. <laughs> so, bakit? How, why do you... Bakit ka nakakaisip ng ganun, Ginger, di ba? Eh, hindi nang sabi mo, process, di ba? So, the process is basically, 
putting yourself in an environment where you are open, where you are um, open to ideas, where it's quiet, where you can actually think and daydream, possibly daydream about things and interconnect and uh, intertwine related ideas or even unrelated ideas, intertwine ideas. So, ako, what I do is normally kung gusto ko ng me time or if I'm thinking of business strategies, I really go to a coffee shop and stay there. Na ako lang, wala akong kausap. And yun, I put myself in an open environment. Now, obviously, hindi siya dadating lang, di ba? Yung sabihin mo, Ginger, nagkape naman ako ha. Pumunta naman ako Starbucks, nagkape ako, tumunga nga ako. Obviously, hindi dadating yung idea kung nakatunga nga ka lang. So, you need to do something. So, it involves action. Also, so the second step is trying to learn from things. So, manod ka ng TED talks, or try to surf on a particular topic, or try to try to read articles, read blogs, read the newspaper, read magazines, do something, talk to people, even. Kung may makita kang friend, ka usap ano ginagawa mo ngayon? Bak ano ba yan? Ano ba yan? And really be interested in what the article is saying, what your friend is saying, what the video is saying. So really try to get inputs and insights from it. So ganun, sa akin, that's how I create ideas. So that's how I come up with new ideas or new strategies. Oh, yeah. How about the Bird? Ano yung, oh, ano yung oh. ginagawa mo? Ako naman, ano, uh, Ginger, medyo unconventional din yung style ko. No? Ako minsan tatayo ako sa isang kanto, no? sa isang community, sa isang village. At tatanungin ko sa sarili ko, ano ba yung wala dito? Ano yung kinakainis ko? Ano yung kinakainis ng mga tao dahil wala yun sa lugar na yun? So, ako, no, meron akong mga namimit, no? yung, yung isang lugar sa Antipolo no? na kinainis ng mga tao noon kasi walang mabilhan ng mineral water. Simple mineral water lang. Yung kakilala ko doon, yun lang ang niya sa kanto na yon Mineral water na malamig. Dahil ang dami doon mga tao, mga empleyado, nag-aabang ng sasakyan, na gusto mong bumilang tin- ng tubig, kailangan pa nilang pumasok ng supermarket, eh, mauhuli ka, di ba? Mapapasok ka, wala kang time na para pumasok. So, ginawa niya nagtaroy-tayo siya doon sa stall, just mineral water. Nakikita siya ng malaki dahil doon. So, isa yun, ano yung inis, inis factor. Bakit tignan niya dyan sa lugar ninyo? Ano ba yung wala na gustong-gusto mo o kailangan-kailangan mo at that time na nakatayo ka dyan? For sure, yan ang isa sa pwede mong paghugutan ng business idea. Yeah, so magandang input yan. Eh? Kasi doon sa business canvas that I was telling you about, Bern, the first question is really, what problem are you trying to solve? Ganda yan. So doon talaga nagsisimula ang lahat sa mga problema <laughs> na gusto mo i-address. So, so, ay, ito pala yun. Sorry, ito pala yung blog post ko. So if you want to read it, so again, don't wait for inspiration to hit you. So... Ang title ng blog post ko was There is no such thing as inspiration. So, ito yung link to my blog post. So, it's a skill that you can develop. So, definitely you should hone and develop that skill. And also check out Burns' blog entitled How to Start a Business Effectively. So, if you want more ideas on how to come up with that particular business idea, then read these um, links. We'll be sending you a copy of the presentation pala, so don't worry if you give you a copy. Yeah. So there. So that ends our webinar for today. Uh, before we go, Bern, would you like to invite them to the yes, Enter Entrepreneurship? Yeah, we're coming up with a series of uh, webinars and uh, another set of speakers in the tono at uh, napaka-interesting ng ating uh, series dahil Ito mismo yung kakailanganin mo, yung, yung mga dapat mong malaman before you start your business or during your planning of, of, of the business that you are you have been dreaming for for the past year, for the past uh, decade. No? Dapat uh, ito, tignan mo yung schedule na to starting January 30, umpisahan yan with Joji Azarine. Titignan natin, no? pag-uusapan natin at bibigyan tayo ng, ng tip ni Joji kung uh, profitable ba yung business idea mo. No? Siguro ngayong webinar na to, naiisip mo na na Oh, ito pala yung, yung, yung pwede kong upisa ni Grosyo. So, titignan nga natin ni, with Joji Azurin kung talagang profitable ba yung business idea mo. And then, on February 6 naman, tuturuan tayo ni Sunny Del Rosario on how to uh, effectively uh, market your product. Tapos, bibigyan tayo ng mga models at uh, 
Magtuturuan tayo ng tamang uh, market research sa ating pagnegosyo. At uh, on February 20 naman, ito importante, importante ito no, na kailangan nasusulat natin yung mission natin, yung vision for for your business. Of course, yung business plan napaka-importante rin so hindi kailangan komplikado 'yan. Tuturuan tayo ni Bonnie De Guzman sa techniques niya kung paano magsulat nito uh, mission vision at ang ating business plan. Tapos on February 27, ito, very, very energetic kong tao to. Si Attorney Energetic Caldonado, he will help us uh, determine ano ba yung, yung klase ng negosyo or structure ng negosyo ng isa mo. Ikaw lang ba mag-isa? So, proprietorship? Or baka tama na dapat may partner ka or mag-book ka ng isang corporation para mas uh, mapalawak mo yung negosyo mo. So, determine natin yan with Attorney. Tapos March 5, yan, malayo-layo ka yan. No? Pero dapat iplano mo na yan. Tuturuan tayo uli ni Sunny Del Rosario para naman i-plano yung mga pag-recruit mo ng tao, pag-manage mo ng tao, at sa mga makukuha yung mga yan, at yung materials mo, mga suppliers mo. Tuturuan tayo yung tamang pagpa-planning and sourcing. And then March 13, abangan nyo din yan. Kanina, pinakitaan namin kayo ng, ng uh, preview kung magkano ba dapat yung kailangan mo to start your business. So, ipapaliwanag pa yan ng, ano, ng, ng mas maliwanag ni, ni Fitz Villa Fuerte on March 13. So March 19 naman, ayan, isa din sa abangan niya kasi minsan tanong natin, saan ba dapat natin ikaw yung negosyo na gusto natin? Baka, okay, dito, madami ng tao, pero baka mami, hindi naman kikita yung klase ng negosyo mo na ilalagay mo doon. So, how to find your perfect business location ay tuturo ni Paolo TV on March 19. Tapos, sa April 2 naman, yan, importante, importante, kasi madami nagtatanong dyan, paano ba ako magpaparehistro ng negosyo ko, no? Saan ba muna yung unang step? Anong dapat kung mga ipunin na requirements bago ko puntahan yung mga mga government uh, offices na kailangan ko puntahan? Yung from barangay, to munisipyo, DTI, or SEC. So titingnan niya, tuturo sa atin ni ano. At pati mga proseso, no? Tuturo sa atin yan ni Dante Victor on April 2. Tapos uh, finally, on April 9, uh, ayan, tuturo naman sa atin ni Simon Tess kung paano i-launch ng tama yung business natin, no? Paano ba? Online ba? Through the internet? Or pwedeng offline? O bigay ka ng flyers? No? Pwedeng pareho. Ituturo natin yan. No? Depende yan sa kung ano yung negosyo na papasukin. Ayan. So, April na yan. Nabangan niyo po yan. Ayan po. No? So, for the full uh, program, you will just pay uh, 3,999 pesos. Napakamura po yan. Sa iba pong mga seminars, kada isang date, eh, ganyan ang presyo. 5,000 pesos. Ito, sampung sessions na yan for 3,999. Tapos kung hindi nyo naman gustong attendan lahat o hindi kayo available, pwede naman per session. Yan, attendan nyo yan. 500 per session lang yan. 500 pesos per session. Pero kung ako sa inyo, kunin nyo na po yan lahat. Kung hindi mo kayo makatend ng live, we will be providing you the recordings of this webinars. Yes, Ginger. Mm-hmm. So, yun. So, actually, meron kaming papa raffle din for those na nag avail ng all 10 sessions. So, oh, yeah, yeah. we'll be raffling off Cyberpreneur Philippines book. So, yun. Very helpful. I've, I've um, heard a lot of good reviews then of that book. Mm-hmm. So, na kami ni Burn. <laughs> Nagsulat kami din for, for that <laughs> book. authors kami dyan. Yeah, so um, do we, before we end this, do you have any questions? Because uh, we still have time naman for questions from from the audience now. Baka may mga gusto kayong itanong na hindi namin diniscuss na you want our inputs or insights, mga pahabol. Um, let's just move this to our contact details. So let us know kung gusto nyo, may question, kung may questions pa dyan. Pwede naman namin sagutin ni Byrne habang nandito tayo sa webinar, di ba? Kung may specific questions kayo about your businesses. Mm-hmm. So, mukhang wala na Byrne. Okay, oh, so, uh, if ever, if ever you need help in your businesses, um, you can contact, ah, there we have one. About ideas, can I share them with you and get your input? Yeah, sure, no worries. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. you can... Uh, CEJ. So yeah, sure. You can email us at uh, you can email us at the contact email dito. Yung mga email addresses na nakalagay sa screen. Yon. So just feel free to email us. Um, you can also book me for your mentoring sessions. Um, you although your mentoring sessions go weekdays lang ako pwede because I have my workshops pag weekends. So uh, if you want to book 
only for mentoring sessions, uh, yun lang. May, yun lang. You may limited uh, days lang ako pwede. So, there. So, if we don't have any questions, thank you so much, guys, for attending our webinar today. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, everyone. No? At uh, kung kayo man po ay merong uh, katanungan for, for this uh, particular webinar, meron po kami contact details dito na dinagay ni Ginger. No? You can uh, follow us on our social media pages. And also, you can email us dito sa mga nakasulat na email addresses namin. And also, you can visit our websites no? kay Ginger, managinger.com, sa akin, burngutierrez.com. And uh, kung meron din kayong business ideas na gusto nyo i-propose at uh, gu uh, gusto nyo mabigyan namin kayo ng feedback, yeah. email nyo lang po sa yes. yes, feel free to email us. So, thank you guys. Thank you for joining and have a great afternoon. Good afternoon everyone. Bye-bye and God bless. Thank you.